beaters, it's Gina from Orchid and Opal Jewelry and Beads, and I'm here today with some gemstone chip beads. I know many of you saw my recent bbcraft.com haul. They send me some products every month to kind of share and review on my channel, and also to do a follow-up video with maybe a tutorial or some other idea featuring an item that they sent me. So they sent me these really nice gemstone chips. It's a set of 10 different semi-precious stone. You can see a lot of them are gone. That's what I'm going to be showing you today is what I did with those. So instead of a basic tutorial, and I have lots of those to come, I thought today it would be fun to show you 10 different ways that I decided to use the gemstone chips and show you all the different types of projects that you might be able to do with these because I know it's not just me who thinks that these can be a challenge. I did make the comment on that video that these aren't my favorite favorite, favorite things to work with, but that's just because the ideas don't pour out of me readily for the gemstone chip. So I wanted to take it as a personal challenge to come up with 10 different ways to use these, and I'm happy to say that I actually love the gemstone chips. So without further ado, let's go through what I made. I made three pairs of earrings and three bracelets and four necklaces. So let's see. The first item here is the gemstone chip earrings. Now these are made with natural lemon jade that came in the set. And by the way, the link for that gemstone set is down below. So feel free to check that out if you're interested. It's $16.99 right now on bbcraft.com. And I also have a coupon code below. It's GINA5, G-I-N-A-5, and that will save you $5 off a $40 Order, and they've got all kinds of great jewelry making and craft items on their site. And check back on that haul video if you'd like to learn more about the things that they have. But uh, so these are some basic chandelier earring findings. As you can see, I did pair them with some Swarovski crystals in this beautiful light buttery yellow color. And I thought they went really well with the lemon jade. So that's one way that you can use the gemstone chips. They add a lot of texture to pieces and I thought they looked really nice on these earrings with a lot of movement. So that's the first way. The second way, and by the way, there are tons more ways to use the gemstone chips, tons. I actually had more ideas flowing around, but I only wanted to do 10 for this video. So that's just what I'm showing you today, the, the 10 ways that I came up with first, but there's so many ideas out there. So you can also wire wrap them. As you can see, I used these teardrop findings in an antique brass that I had. I had actually gotten these, I believe, on eBay, but you can find them at various places online. And also I've heard you can find them at Hobby Lobby and different craft stores. I get asked a lot where to find those, but uh, I just basically wire wrapped some of these green adventurine gemstone chips in a diagonal pattern. And I could have done the chips around the outside. I've done a tutorial on that before if you want to check that out. But for this particular video, I thought it'd be fun to show another way you can wire wrap stones. So I didn't fill the whole thing. I kept it kind of just loose and free form there and just did them in three diagonal strips. And I thought that came out pretty cute. By the way, I get asked a lot where I get these cards. I do get them on Amazon and I will leave the link down below. These are not specifically for earrings, but I use a special hole punch that makes these tiny little holes in these cards, and I like the length of these cards for earrings with these fish hooks. So if you're interested, I will leave the links to these tags, and I'll even try to find the hole punch and leave a link to that too, if you're interested. So that was the second way that I decided to use the gemstone chip beads. The third pair of earrings I absolutely adore, and that's because I've had these check glass purple teardrop beads in my stash for quite some time, and I've been looking at them and looking at them, and I've really wanted to use them, but inspiration just didn't strike me right off the bat. So when I was kind of playing around with the gemstones and trying to figure out some other ways to use gemstone chips and earrings, I noticed that they went really, really well with the amethyst chips. So I decided, and I had been wanting to make some cluster earrings for a long, long time and just hadn't gotten around to it, but I decided to take these ball head pins and make wire wrapped loops with just a whole bunch of these amethyst chips, as many as I could, and clustered them up above these teardrops. So I thought they came out really cute. I think the colors work really well together and I'm so happy 
to have finally been able to use these beautiful teardrops. They're just a little larger than a lot of the teardrops I have in my stash, but I think they make some beautiful earrings paired up with the amethyst. So that's the third way that I decided to use them. Now let's get into the bracelets. So I mentioned that I've made three different types of bracelets. The first type is a basic memory wire bracelet. So these are really popular and they're so easy to make. I have a great tutorial on that if you're interested in how to make memory wire bracelets. So I decided to pair these gorgeous red coral gemstone chips with some other shades of red and also some antique brass. I added this little poinsettia charm. Of course, it just looks like any other kind of flower. And now that I'm looking at it, I see there's a little imperfection here that everything looks so much bigger and more obvious on these videos when things are close up. So I am gonna switch out this charm for one that doesn't have this blob on the side. But moving along, I used this beautiful red coral and paired it with some other shades of red check glass beads and some spacers and then check out these cute little ladybug beads. These came in a past dollar bead box and I thought this was a great way to showcase these fun little shapes. And I love using fun little shapes like that in the memory wire bracelet. It's a great way to use those if you have little stars or flowers. I mean, check glass beads come in all different fun shapes. So if you're ever at a loss as to what to do with some of these shapes besides just basic stringing, maybe try to use them and incorporate them in a memory wire bracelet just as an idea. So I always love making these and that was a fun bracelet to make. So the next bracelet I made was a little bit more complex and this used a base of ladder stitch. I did that with some 80 seed beads and then basically wove in these beautiful rose quartz beads and also incorporated some of these check glass light pink bell flowers and I thought it was kind of cute because they're understated. They go so well with the rose quartz and the floral theme but they don't stand out and they're not obvious unless you're really looking. So I thought this was a really fun application. I am going to do a tutorial on this type of bead weaving with seed beads and also with fire polish beads and it is a chevron pattern and it looks really cool it's really easy i like to have a mix of tutorials on my channel using products that i know a lot of you have so look forward to that coming probably by the end of this week but not to get off track that's kind of just the same type of bead weaving that i did with that and i just think it looks so organic and it kind of looks like a a hedge or something. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's different and it's fun and I love the way it looks on the wrist. So that was the second bracelet I made. The third type of bracelet I actually made two of and I started out with some bead weaving. This was brick stitch and it's a great way to do a multi-strand bracelet or even a necklace without using special connectors. So you can see it tapers down to one point and you can use your typical findings as you would with a one strand bracelet, but with this brick stitch, you can kind of make it as big or as wide as you want and then string on multiple strands. And I'd love to do a tutorial on this in the future as well if you're interested in that. But I love the way that the gemstones just kind of add this great texture. It's it's so much more than just a basic multi-strand seed bead bracelet, which is cool too, but these just kind of pop up randomly. There was really no rhyme or reason in the way that I wove this except for that I made sure I did about five of these chips per strand, but I made sure it was random. I didn't pay too much attention and I also added in some little spots of silver just to add some extra interest there as well. By the way, these clasps here are from BB Craft. There's other things here that I've used that are from bbcraft.com. Since I'm featuring their products, the ball head pins that I used on these amethyst earrings are also from bbcraft.com and they are stainless steel before I forget to mention that. So I actually made two different colors of that same style bracelet and here's the one I did with the agate. And by the way, that was black obsidian down there and then this is agate. So it had these beautiful oranges and peach colors, gold, just beautiful juicy colors. And I had gotten 
the some peach seed beads in a recent it's called a bag of gold from adornable elements i also did a video on that and the peach seed beads i thought were so cool and they went well with the colors that were popping up in these stones and i just did my own seed bead mix so i took like several different colors coppers golds even clear some of the peach and i mixed them together and i thought it added some nice variations of color that really played well with the variations of color of these stones. And then once again, I just wrapped it up on the edges with the brick stitch and tapered it down and added my clasp just like that. So that's it for the earrings and bracelets I've made. And I'm excited to show you the necklaces. So let me move these things away. And I'm gonna pull out my nice little display here. So this first one is pretty basic, but I like simple. I like simple, elegant designs. And I thought it looked really pretty. So these are obviously amethyst. And I already had these larger, like the ones down here in the center, I already had these larger amethyst nuggets or chips in my stash from this summer. I hadn't used them. They'd been sitting on my shelf as well and I've been looking at them and I was waiting for inspiration to strike and I'm happy that it did when I got the smaller amethyst chips I thought wouldn't it be really cool to do a graduated type necklace with the larger amethyst and the amethyst is so pretty I didn't feel a need to add a lot more to this I would love to wear this just as is with the beautiful amethyst being the showcase. So I even used here, you can kind of see the purple tiger tail. BB Craft also sent me this month as well in different colors. So I thought that was kind of cute. And then I just finished it up with some basic chain. And then like I like to do, I added a little embellishment on the extender in the back. So that's the first necklace. The second necklace I made is a longer necklace meant to hang lower on the chest. And this is using the shell chip beads that they sent. And I'll have to show it to you in a couple different views because it is longer. But uh, basically, as you can see, it's a two strand necklace. And what I did was basically wire wrap the shell gemstones in pairs of three. And I did that first before I even came up with the necklace design I was gonna do. I knew I was gonna do something with wire wrapping and I just took all the white shell beads out of the case and started doing wire wraps on groups of three. Then I laid them out kind of by size because as you can see, some of them are bigger and I kind of wanted to make them even on both sides of the necklace as best I could. I wanted to do something different than just stringing them all together because the color is pretty basic. I wanted to add another interesting detail. So I had these flower connectors in my stash, but unfortunately they were only one sided and the back is not very pretty. It's just kind of hollow and nothing there and I didn't want them to constantly flip around. So this is something I haven't done before, but I think it works really well. And I actually just butted two of them up together and kind of made them into one charm. So now problem solved, they have a front and a back. I don't have to worry if it flips around what side is showing. And I actually did that exactly the same way with these. I just got these connectors off of eBay, but they were hollow, they were like concave, and if they flipped over, then it just wouldn't look very nice. So I decided to make it more three-dimensional, and I just stacked them together, and then connected them with a jump ring, as you can see. And now, I don't have to worry, because it looks good from both sides. So just some other ideas there for you. I'm going to move this out of the way, so maybe you can see this a little bit better. Kind of the flow of it. So... Like I said, it is a longer necklace. It's meant to hang further down the chest. I added this really cute little clasp, but you actually really don't need it because it can fit over the head. So that's just another idea for you, another idea about wire wrapping and how you can cluster the beads together and make different clusters. And I'm excited to show you the third necklace which I was inspired by some images I saw on Pinterest where it looked like somebody had taken the gemstone chips and kind of wrapped them around cord. So I actually had this brown 
poured in my stash from bbcraft.com as well. And I have a handful of larger whole beads. These came from Check Beads Exclusive. And I think these little silver ones did as well. And I thought they would be great at covering the ends of the wire if I decided to wire wrap the cord and make a necklace. So that's what I did. This is aquamarine and I basically strung it onto about a 26 gauge wire. And then I just spiraled it around the cord, keeping a nice tension on it so that it was coiled as, as tightly together as possible with the fewest amount of gaps. And then I just wound the ends around and around and around until they were secure and taking up most of the whole of the silver bead. That way these aren't slipping up and down. They're kind of stationary because they're sitting on that wire. Of course, I could add a little bit of glue and make it even more secure, but I just thought it was a unique idea. I'm always looking for different ways to use these large hole beads and also this cord because the ideas don't just flow as freely for me but I thought this was just so unique. So that's just another idea. Huge amount of texture and color and just a lot of fun. So the final necklace I have to show you, I'm really excited about. It is so colorful. Up until now, I've shown you nine different ways to use the gemstone chips, but I've had all the colors kind of separated as I use them for each application. But I didn't want to miss out on an opportunity to show you how beautiful the gemstone chips look together when you combine colors. So I just think this necklace is so fun. Actually goes with my ring, but it's so summery and just boho and all the movement here and just showcases the gemstones, all the different colors and how beautiful they look together. And I just thought this would look really cute with like a summery, like beachy boho dress. I don't know, I guess because I'm over the cold now. I'm dreaming about summertime or something, but these just look so cute all together and so much fun. So that's my last necklace. I did make a couple little earrings to go with it because, come on, I had to. I had these in little clusters of three that I wrapped and then I didn't put them all on one head pin because I wanted some more movement and that's why I did that, but it just has all the different colors in there as well. Just fun and cute and colorful, and I just love playing with color. So it was so much fun taking on this little challenge of 10 different ways to use gemstone chip beads in jewelry and just kind of let my mind wander and come up with some creative uses and kind of think about all the different ways that you can use gemstone chips in jewelry and how they don't have to be as intimidating as they may first seem. So as always, I hope this was helpful for you guys. I hope it was fun to see some finished pieces to see what I did with this. Again, check out bbcraft.com in the links below if you're interested in any of these products or if you're interested in seeing what bbcraft has to offer. Don't forget that coupon code GINA5 if you are interested in placing an order. And as always, I love to hear from you. So feel free to leave me a comment or question down below. Let me know what your favorite item here was today or what you like to do with gemstone chip beads. Like I said, the possibility are almost endless. There's so many different things that I didn't even show you that you can do with the gemstone chip beads. So I could probably even follow this up with a part two at some point. I do have lots more videos to come. Like I said, I have some more tutorials coming in the works and hopefully a finished jewelry update to come very soon as well. Thanks so much, everybody. Happy beading. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love you to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell if you'd like to see more of my videos. And check out the video description section to follow along on all of my social media handles, visit my Etsy shop, and check out my new website and blog at orchidandopal.com. Thanks for watching!